Welcome to Misfire and Fuel Trim. I'm Bill Peek. I helped develop this program along with Dr. Norman Knoll. We did this because we frequently help people diagnose problems, and it appeared that engine misfires, fuel control, and delivery problems seem to cause a major problems. We developed this for a specific purpose. This is to be used when you have already tried your routine diagnostics and they failed. So as a second effort, once you've done the quick fixes, come in here and start a diagnostic. And to do this, we've got several things to understand. I want you to really understand the misfire monitor and how it works along with the fuel system monitor. And scan data is all important for testing because it helps us find problems quickly and easily. Now, you must be able to take these data and find a way to pick up a diagnostic procedure or a diagnostic direction. You're going to use a scan tool. It's fast. It's efficient. And probably use functions on the scan tool you may not be using at the present time. And you're going to use digital storage scopes or grafting multimeters. And what you're going to have to do once you get this data is you're going to have to obtain the data and then interpret what does the test results look like? Are the waveforms normal? We want you to understand that every time you look at a piece of data, it should tell you that you have either eliminated something and found good, or you've identified something that's bad, or at least you have a direction of where to go next. Stop and ask yourself these three questions as you're analyzing this. Does this indicate that I should go and look at something additional? And we'll show you examples when we do some of our testing in here of how we do that. Now, misfire and fuel trims are, have two important monitors we're going to talk about. Obviously, the misfire monitor and the fuel control monitor. These are the heart of the program. But there's a lot of peripheral things we're going to have to talk about. But these are the basis for our class. Now, misfire problems have we've diagnosed in kind of an informal research study, and we've found that about 40% are truly ignition-related. That's why most of our functions that most technicians do, first line is to find out why there's ignition misfire. But don't ignore that 21% are fuel-related, and we'll tell you why later on in the program. 20% a component related. Some component has put us in a condition where we have a misfire condition that's not fuel or not ignition related directly. It may be a secondary. Basic engine functions as always causes a percentage of them and just a few of them are just other various reasons from, un, you know, unable to document. The hardest of the real world problems we find is when there's more than one problem present. For example, we got a leaking secondary wire or a coil along with dirty injectors all in the same vehicle. Now, we have a couple of questions for you. Will changing the wire along be a long-term fix? What we have found is that lean running vehicles tend to have more secondary breakdowns than others. So if you just fix the wire, and not the lean condition, you may still have a problem. So will cleaning the injectors along, alone be a long-term fix without changing the wire? No. Now, the biggest question is, will your current diagnostic procedure detect both of these problems so you can do a complete repair and avoid a comeback? This is a structure we're talking about. Taking enough time to make sure you've done a complete repair. Yes, we know everyone's under pressure these days to do an inexpensive repair. But don't let inexpensive lure you into a comeback that you're going to be responsible for. One of the frequently overlooked problems we find is unbalanced fuel delivery. That is where some cylinders receive more fuel than other cylinders. Valve timing being incorrect. Older vehicle drive belts are changed, and on newer vehicles, VVT controls. We're finding, because of poor oil changes, many of our VVT controls are not functioning as they should and causing unusual problems. 
and just general secondary ignition problems because we have high mileage vehicles, well over 100,000 miles with ignition breakdown. It's under stress. And sometimes it's sneaky problems where load sensors are not calibrated like a mass airflow that's dirty, causing us problems. And we can have all of these on one vehicle. That's the real problem we're talking about. Other drivability things to watch for is cold start emission reduction strategy monitors. Is the system really operating well under cold operating conditions? You may have problems that only show up during cold operations. Is the cam monitor working properly during cam timing? Does it give you some clues to intimate problems you could be finding? How about electronic throttle control? We've seen some problems that are unique in those areas. And, of course, the comprehensive component monitor, which checks for basic bad sensors. The EGR monitor, is it giving us proper indications of EGR flow? Excessive EGR flow can be causing us a great deal of problems. We're going to talk about looking at scan data and examining these systems. And then go mode 6 for in-depth analysis of the O2 sensor, catalytic efficiency, EVAP, which is not part of this program, but it's there, and misfire on Ford on many of their vehicles is only contained in Mode 6 information. Now, the Onboard Diagnostics 2, OBD2, has a great imp improvement. It's improved to a level where you can really depend on codes, and you can also depend on it to locate problems you have missed during a diagnosis. So diagnostic trouble codes and mode 6 data can be used now with a lot more confidence than in the old days. We only had mode OBD1, which were lousy codes. The good news was in the old days, they didn't come back and identify problems we had missed. Keep that in mind. They, all of these codes still do not replace the need for a good technician. They can help you find the root cause of a problem if you look, look deep enough and long enough. Now, the diagnostic management system is designed to identify the, and control spark and fuel. What is fuel delivery? How much spark control should we have? What are we doing with it? It's going to be monitoring operating conditions on a continuous basis to uh, try to identify defects and perform diagnostics off of these conditions like ignition counters and cylinder identifier for misfire conditions and generate pass-fail results for these tests. We're going to record these and store them. We're going to utilize the storage of those to tell us what type of problem it is. And it's going to help us perform fail test actions. Once we know something's failed, what do we need to do to verify that failure? And that can get to be tricky. And then the system is going to alert the driver to a failure with a check engine or MIL light and request defaults, in some cases, to replace sensors that can easily be replaced. What we're going to focus on in this particular program is the ignition counter and the cylinder identifier for our pass fail results on misfires as part of it. But don't limit scan data to just parameter IDs, and, double, and trouble codes. There's other some very useful stuff to be utilized, and we're going to review some of that with you, like system status, sometimes referred to as the INM readiness status, because these have to be ready to pass an INM test. And look at the entire information about the DTC. Make sure you understand what it's telling you. Because frequently we solve a problem simply by carefully reading all the information about a DTC, not looking at a short thing. And then going back and looking at the freeze frames, what condition was it set, how many warm-up cycles, and then studying the parameters in mode one. Now the system status information is a display of the inspection and maintenance, INM flags.
The system status flags identify whether the OBD system for a particular monitor has run during this vehicle's emission control test, sometimes in the recent past. It supplies information about the status of the monitor and is used to determine if the monitor has done one of three things. It's completed, it's passed, or it's failed. This is so important, we want to take the time to have a complete section just on the I&M readiness status.